Welcome to the podcast that puts a finger on the pulse of revenue and technology. On this show, you'll hear from industry experts, executives, and investors on the art of transforming B2B businesses into scale-up insurgents. This is Revenue Uncoded. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's another it's week. It's time for another week of Revenue Encoded. Coded, coded, coded. Bill Griffin, Brian Preston. We're here to talk to you about Chiefs matching football. shirts. Matching shirts. Matching Our shirts. wives are going to be very happy about That's that. Right. Finally, we got the memo. Okay, here we go. Uh, and yes, we are the world champions, champions. Kansas City Chiefs. I believe uh, I believe both of us were correct last week when we said it was going to be a three point separation. It is true. Yeah, third twenty seven twenty four. I think I said twenty eight twenty five, so I was closer. Um, I don't remember it that way, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, people from Philadelphia claiming, you know, there was a hold or something like that. Uh, that Come happens on. no matter who. If if we would have lost, we would have had something to whine about. So yeah. that's just every part single of the play. Game. By the way, if you go back and replay, there are at least six instances of them holding our receivers on critical plays. But that's another that's well, another podcast. But see, that's that's just people being friendly. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. I'll go so ahead. you know, and the other piece was was that I got to give Philly credit; they played a hell of a game. They did play a hell of a game, and they were nothing awesome. but class. I'm, I'm 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 being a, a bit of a, a jack leg, but and that's nothing good. but class out of yeah. those guys. And I love Kelsey, brother, Super Bowl, and the way they both worked together. Uh, the angle was it was a an amazing Super Bowl. But in well, the end, we're, I believe, game, right? in, in the end, Kansas City. Is the world champions? So anyway, um, so hey, today uh, uh, we we were trying to get somebody else, so we're stuck with just the two of us. Oh man, that's awesome and bad. So <laughs> so so today's topic is orchestration, orchestration. of CRM, OSS, BSS. To your network together, and uh, by the way, for those who are not familiar, that is all telecom stuff, right? So it's going to be a telecom centric world today, right? So, yeah. so why don't you get definitions, CRM? Man, you know that has been an argument in and of itself. I've I've talked with um, uh, some of our former colleagues about that um, over the years, and probably fifteen years ago. You know what is a real CRM, right? So obviously, you know sales and campaign management, but there's this blurry line that starts to occur between what should the BSS do from the order orchestration process perspective and what is CRM, what's lead management, and where's that that gray area handoff, but I'm going too far into it. So for right now, CRM, the way that I see it, is um, everything from uh, lead management uh, to lead kind of moving it down the path. Um, and, um, uh, you know, sometimes that's a lot more complex for commercial orders than it is for resi. Resi is more transactional. Resi uh, being residential. Sorry. Sorry, uh, I got to throw that Get some there. technology yeah, in there. So, but in the telco side, right? So a commercial order entry is, uh, it's a lot more involved. There's a lot more people involved. There's lotions. There's, you know, um, there may be commissions. Involved. There may be other items that come uh, into there, play there, I'm that. sorry. I'm being, a, I'm being a little bit of a, a smarty pants. But no, there's uh, there's truck rolls. There's build outs. There's um, orchestration with yeah. a lot of other facets, right? Could be a multi-tenant environment. Uh, all there sorts of items exactly. that come up. So the CRM is one piece of this orchestration. Then you have the BSS, which you know we live, breathe, and sleep in for decades, right? And the BSS is really just everything about the customer information, the order, um, the people you know, side of it. the people side, the bill, the invoice, the services, etc., the products and bundles, catalog. Then you have the OSS. All right? So the OSS, I typically think of inventory management. I think of interaction with inventory management. I think of um, you know a lot of other pieces, right? So mm-hmm. I wish that we had um, one of our uh, some of our some of our partner companies uh, like Sastel or others like Incognito. We'd love to have them talk about that at future podcasts. Mm-hmm. But the OSS side, key element, and then you have the network. Right, the network, and one of the things that I've seen over my career is that a telco typically um, has one of those three: CRM, OSS, BSS. 
as the big the big guy, right? The and mothership. They're, they're the mothership, right? And so you'll have one or two or two others that are supporting it, right? They'll mm-hmm. be the prime, they'll be the parent, they'll be the the king daddy, right? And so all sorts of, you know, sometimes turf wars, that how that happens, sometimes uh, just legacy system evolution or product offerings or you know, probably half a dozen different variables as to, as to how that happens. Yeah. But usually one in a telco IT stack ends up being... The, that's, that's the driving pin. That's the, the big stick. Everything spins around that. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Um, so, um, but interestingly, when I think about these all three and the fourth element, let's, let's talk about the network side. Just and for how, a second. how an orchestration of network how it all to works. these items. Right. Um, man, because, um, you know, when you're on a greenfield opportunity um, or you're on a merger and acquisition and you have 17 consultants all working with the money guys, the, the venture mm-hmm. capital guys, trying to figure out how are we going to put all this together, all right? And how's it all going to work? Um, you know, it, it really becomes an interesting dynamic watching all that come together. Yep. Um, so, but inevitably, I, in my opinion, and I don't know, this, I may differ from my cohort of 20 plus years, Mr. Preston, but... Um, you know, I think, you know, network is king, right? You've always told me that. Network is king. Pipe, pipe is, is king. king. Yeah. It all starts from the network Otherwise, and the build selling? out, right? So, so CRM, OSS, BSS are really kind of second players or supporting char- characters to or to the network. Yes or no? It's, a, it's like your foundation of everything you're going to build off of. You, if you have a, a network that is not part of a mobile Offering, mm-hmm. you're not going to offer mobile. I've seen new types of network mm-hmm. outside of the mo- outside the mobile net- domain that have driven the need for all new stack across yep. the the whole fabric, right? Across those three players, and and in order to orchestrate them, which is kind of what we're talking about, that's a key element. Each one of these pieces, especially as we have the converged services being offered on people's networks now, mm-hmm. uh, quad plays and things, and the mobility piece, and you've got text and the data and all the different elements that you're going to support in a multimedia system. Yep. That that network has multiple interaction points between the CRM and the BSS and the OSS, not necessarily always directly, but each one of those pieces is engaging with what services and data are rendered off of that network. Well, then that would lend more more credence to my argument that the network is, in fact, the driver, is the king, because new networks, whether they be 5G on the mobile side or, you know, fiber to the home or whatever it is on a digital tra- side, transformation with that as well. Yeah, it's it, it the, the networks are the kingpin. They're driving, and the supporting characters need to kind of recognize that BSS, OSS, and CRM. Yeah, if you, if you're an actual network provider in the telecom and data space, mm-hmm. you kind of need a network. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, I just <laughs> yeah. assume. Well, right? I kind of say, and, and not and not to minimize the other pieces on that, but that network is your foundation. That is your your railroad tracks, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. super highways. Mm-hmm. Everything else runs on that, or mm-hmm. or get something from it, vice versa. So yeah. you got to have that. So so when I look back at the the past few decades, I I just think of. Of, of each of these legs, the BSS guys and the OSS guys and the CRM guys and the network guys, they're all kind of thrown into this mess, right? You know, whether it's, you know, we're an existing company and there's a new network that's driving, you know, uh, the requirement for change across mm-hmm. these elements or, the, or these IT element stacks. Right, or it's a greenfield where ooh, we're going off the new cool stuff. I'm going to go do this, but all four of those facets tend to have different personalities. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> I, I would concur with that assessment, Mr. Grevy. And and watching the the personalities and the temperaments of the network guy versus the billing guy versus the CRM guy versus the OSS guy. 
Well, what do you think about that? You know, to, to me, um, uh, you know, then wh- wh- how do you see those personalities well, between uh, those four? Let's just talk that. Historically, mm-hmm. as, as a um, ombudsman in the middle of those things. A what? Uh, a, a person that kind of helps um, navigate. Ombudsman? Ombudsman. Um, I'm going to have to look that one up. That. That's, that's right. what the Google's ombudsman, for. Ombudsman, ladies and gentlemen. But is that where we're, we're in the middle and we basically mediate between these different personalities. For example, someone will complain and say, you know what, our customers can't see their uh, messages for in their in the web portal that they look at, for example. That's a billing problem. The number of fingers that come flying out and pointing in different directions and the number of answers that come back that are actually correct and wrong uh, is mind-boggling <laughs> because at the end of the day, you have to look at the the information. They're going, so yes, the network person, they go, well, did the call not go through or the, the text didn't go through? What happened? They go, oh, no, they got it. They can't see it. They go, not our problem. You're wrong yeah. what you're wrong. This, yeah. I think I've heard you that's, say that well, many that's times. That's what we do on the media. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. We run Keep what going. you're wrong. Keep going. Number two is they go, okay, so they they the data came out and it turns out they've turned up a new network element, for example. And did they tell to, everybody? Well, they did. It was on the purchase order. It's been set up here, and they've done testing. It's a, there's a launch piece of it. And it comes out, and they can't. But the downstream people, there's been no communication that this is coming up. Mm. So for a while, that traffic or those events, et cetera, are, are not flowing through. And you would think it would be simple to have that go through, but the, the devil is in the details on those things, and the number of times that that has a... Um, a little hiccup to it before it actually flows all the way through. Uh, so, so just quick sidebar on the devils and the details, right? I don't think a lot of certainly people um, outside the industry have no clue, right? People within the telecom space have a, a lot of, le- a lot of they have they that. have some space, right? But unless you're down in the details with Amabath and you know well, all, and the, all the different file it, formats it, 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 and all the granular bits and pieces and all of the orchestration across all these pieces the that, that 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 is really required for something to you know the gazinhas and go, the gazachos left to right left hand side starts yeah. on the network mm-hmm. somebody did something that triggered an event mm-hmm. that event mm-hmm. needs to be captured ignored but after it's evaluated what are we going to do with it but you know, it's, but and either the way, next phase is if you're going to do something with it, well, what did we define of what we're going to do with it? And this one's new, and we have no rule for it. So, what happens to that? Is there something that's notifying us that we have new events, not new events? These are just kind of process flow steps that speak to the idea of orchestration. Well, in the meantime, across all of these elements. In the meantime, the guy up at the top with the money is just saying, I don't understand. How can this be so difficult? Just make it work. Yeah, and then, and then when you get into one of those great meetings where you have the upper echelon people discussing the fact that this doesn't look and smell right, and I'm not getting what I paid for, the the technical people come into play and start throwing technical jargon out and things about why this didn't work here and there. And you can see, literally see people's heads kind of uncork and fall over onto the table. Uh, and you're like, okay, this is not going where we need it to. So let's take a step back and just follow the process. And then eventually we're going to get to the point that the reason the customer didn't see that data is because that particular type of event is not, currently scheduled to be displayed on the web portal, for example. All or right, so, we've changed it to a new one, and, right. and that, that is not right. going full thread yet. So what, you just just des- what you've just described is the network, and there's a disconnect to either the BSS and or the OSS. It's probably both. CRM is the... I a call the CRM person. kind of a little bit of a high-maintenance Well, but it, it, it depends on your definition of the CRM piece. Is this for the support, to support the OSS, BSS, and the network? From the external world, rolling trucks, managing accounts, doing that sort of thing, or are you going to are you going to lump that over here into the OSS side? I put of this? that on the OSS side. Okay. I'm just I'm, right. I'm yeah, just the, the the CRM is out there trying to sell the sham wow. They're trying to they're trying to they, provide the but cool. The sham wow may come from a visibility platform that you have for the things that you've shown, and that's what you've you've sold the customer. 
Mm -hmm. So that routes all the way through the OSS and the mm -hmm. BSSI and the network to mm -hmm. actually be part of that engaging so, metric that you would use with your customer. So, and the CRM, I've I've already kind of, well, I think know, I've, ha OSS. I've had meetings this and recently, very recently, where it's like, hey, we're just a CRM, we're just a mirror, we're just a mirror, we're just representing everything that's happening in the OSS, BSS, and the network. That you know, we don't really do any heavy lifting. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the OSS, the BSS or the network side. And you know, we're just a reflection of what's everything's being sent up to us on the front end. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm but see, we, we just went pretty far into the weeds and I'm sure people's heads fell off a couple of times because <laughs> ours almost fell off talking about that. So when you when you look at these items, I think and let's boil it up about three levels. All right. Sorry. Right? So we're, we're not talking specifically about any one of these items, but it's the orchestration again of the items. Because I think that's a that is a key, absolute key topic. And what does orchestration really mean? It's the it's the confluence between the networking elements, the data that comes out of it, the consumption of it at the BSS, the OSS side, Correct. how it supports your sales efforts Correct. and in those pieces. So what does that mean to somebody if they're if they're thinking about this and they're not normally practitioners in all of these different pieces. That's a thought process of saying, if I'm going to show something up here, who knows how to get it from here to my front end, front end, the okay? lipstick. And then mm -hmm. what about timing? What about dating? Once again, we're dropping down into the weeds a little bit, but it's that orchestration piece of integrating each workflow step. I just think of it simply as left to right. If you trigger something on my network, we paid for it, we built it, it's supposed to be delivering something. When that event comes out, who's who's catching that event and what are they what do they need to do with it? Where does it need to go? Well, let me ask you this. You just mentioned a big word, workflows. Right? Mm -hmm. Workflows Generic IT phrase, you know, that can capture into a lot of different elements, right? There's business workflows and then there's technical workflows and system workflows. But when you look at just these four elements that we've talked about, you are talking literally about thousands of workflows. Absolutely. And so orchestration means at a high level, just a Venn diagram, for example, mm -hmm. of my BSS, which parts of it need this type of product that we're going to launch on our network? What about the OSS? And everybody works through that, but if you if you don't take a, a higher level kind of holistic view on that, sometimes you fall into that trap of what we just did a couple of times, which was I got too caught up in the details here of the network and why this thing, the timestamp's wrong and this isn't going here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the OSS side and my BVOX 9000 is not working. <laughs> BVOX 9000. And I need to get this over here and the BSS yeah. people going, I've got a chirk report I've got to have out in 20 minutes and I need that data. Mm -hmm. Why is the data not there? Mm -hmm. Well, that data actually comes from somebody else. It's not even in our company. It's a third party too, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later. Once again, the Weeds, the weeds. Orchestration. Well, well, I mean, that's what we're trying to talk a little yeah. bit about, right? Is you've got these four big buckets of a telco that, you know, um, people just look at and they go, well, I pick up the phone and it works and I'm happy, right? But, but there literally are thousands of workflows across all of these four pieces. And when somebody makes a change, on the network side or the CRM side or the BSS side or the OSS side and it is not planned and it is not well communicated yeah. communicated across oh, the it's entire planned spread. well the communications right? communicated of an and it's not orchestrated then guess what happens well you have mayhem mayhem right dogs and and it's cats. real and it's really a level of what degree of mayhem mm -hmm. there is Right. When stuff's not working on the network side because of a change, you know, life's difficult for everyone. Right. So so here's a, here's another one that pops up on this. So so you're you're gonna launch some new things out of your lab, for example. Mm. And in Telco there's certain things that uh uh, there's a lot of extra database dipping and things that go on to, to orchestrate the connection of a call service. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't and, have to be call. It's data well, session, just call saying, service. But this, was, this was pretty, Everything. it's been around all the, for a long time. All the new, so like, all the new dynamics. You're going to launch a right? new mm -hmm. 800 product and, yep. and you're going to do it yourself. 
Yep. Uh, you know, you've got the 808 base, all this, all these dips and things coming on, but you want to test it. It's in the lab switch, but the lab switch isn't hooked up to anything. So you go to set it up and you do a few tests here and there, and then you connect this over here. From a from a orchestration perspective, only part of the band's playing right now. Correct. And so you got the tuba so, section over here. And, and when you bring when you bring the rest of the orchestra online, they haven't seen the sheet music. You can get some <laughs> ugly notes that get played off of that concert. And so, and that, that can take correct. you. You can take you a little while. Like, oh my gosh, you scratching uh -huh. the needle on this? Oh my gosh, you just shut oh, down our yeah. far, you know, fifteen yeah. percent of our and, customer and we, base. What are you seen, doing? Everybody, everybody in this industry has had uh, a whoopsie bomb go off <laughs> uh, at one time or another, and it's just inevitable because part yep. of the stuff you can't fix. I mean, nope. it's complex. It's got a lot of moving parts. Orchestration is key, and that that means communications between all the stakeholders mm -hmm. at, at, at a bare minimum. So, but right. then let's let's flip that to the other side where you have the form where there's 896 people that signed off on it, yep. and it still blows up. Yep. So everybody signed it, but nobody looked at it. <laughs> well, either they looked at it or they only kind of looked at it from their little slice right. of, of the it's world. Not, it's not the holistic right. role up so here. So who's in charge of all that? When th when things go boom in the night, who's the one that pays well, the this price? Is, this has been a $64 million question for quite a while. Uh -huh. Because each, each one of those items comes down to who's conducting the orchestra, right? Good point. And sometimes now, you can have guest conductors that come in that are, you know, now, is, you may is hire Is that them. the chief operations officer? Is that not the chief a, not information a, not officer? The, not at the music level. Right. It is, actually is, is, playing is, that, the is that the CTO? The, Who's really responsible for all that? Well, none of them are going to be directly responsible for the bad notes that come out of the concert. Mm, I don't know. They they own the venue. They all they all own the venue, right? And they're so uh, so they the own. band all the band members and sections in here need to be on the same close to the same. So, all right. So, so look, I mean, you know, we've seen it for 20 some years, yeah. right? We've lived it. We've breathed it, but we have not been on the other side. Two different things on that. We, so that is partially true, but we've also been an SI where our, we are the that conductors. Is true. Well, so we didn't actually now, buy some of these things, but we had, we had to get all of the music playing together. Right, as now best let's, we can. Well, here's what I would say to that is we are the orchestrator for three out of the four elements. Mm -hmm. We are not the network integrator. But we have we deal with the network data Feed. and the people all the time. Yes, we do. I, I don't do anything with network, but I've worked with the network engineers many times because because of that orchestration piece, when you're integrating between each one of the OSS, the BSS, and ultimately that CRM yes, comes yeah. in there uh, from a from a presentation standpoint. No, you're so, absolutely right. So you, that's the, the you're, neat you're thing. You're absolutely right. You it, brought up a good point of we've seen it for years. We've seen it work better in some instances and worse in others. We've seen it break. So, so when we see something that works well, if I picked three things that came out of that, which is – Good, nimble communications between the different groups. Okay? So the plan for testing needs to be realistic, and you need to know what you're going to test. If you're bringing up, for example, a new network elements and services, et cetera, mm -hmm. whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. So that communications needs to go, and it can't just be run from the network people because they don't know what's going to happen to that data once it leaves their shop. And it's off the network. So the next one, BSS gets it. And they're like, well, the data came out, but I need some other stuff that I use on this data to make it usable for me. OSS is doing, you know, we're going to we're going to monitor the network and provide that information on operational integrity and our NOC and all these other items on this. Mm -hmm. So all three of those things, OSS and the BSS, while they use the same stuff, look at it from two different views. Absolutely. So, so one person standing there with a BSS centric view isn't necessarily going to have the music come out quite right. Mm -hmm. Same thing if it's on the OSS view. Both band sections have to get together and they have to talk about how to orchestrate this together well, between and, each other. And, and, and in my... That's those are the best ones. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. Right. And in my, in my experience, when I was talking about, well, is it the CIO, the CTO, the CEO, whatever, inevitably, I think there is somebody who is the lead band member on, 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 on the manager. customer side. And then there's somebody 
on the vendor side, on the system integrator side, those two people, right, on, on, a, on a major initiative, a new thing, right, yep. you know, a network change, a new element, or, or something that's driven uh, change across all four of these components, there's usually one really strong person here, and one really strong person here. You really hope right? so. That that are that are that are in good communication, right? Those and, are the successful. And ones. those are the successful ones. And by the way, the ones that get into the before they get into it, they both realize we're about to embark on, you know, a, a, a journey that's going to be pretty salty. Yep. All right. There's going to be, you know, out of the thousands of workflows across all four of these elements, you know, some stuff is not going to go right. Inevitably. Right? Inevitably. It, it, yes. you know, it, it will not go right. All right. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. So right? you all, you want to have those people that are able to communicate and block and tackle. And ability and to kind of react to adversity correctly. A absolutely. And, right? and those are those are. That is that is a set of given resources that you really want to have if you're going to be successful, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I think we both agree on on that piece. That w without that, the the shepherd or the conductor over each one of the OSS side, the BSS and the network, it's really to me, it's three people, three mm -hmm. three solid uh, communicators uh, and workflow uh, well, managers. All oh, just just in general, you're right. So I, you would kind of need that. Each one of them needs to have that. And then over top of that, that orchestration, they need to have that big view of what it's all supposed to do. They can't be just centric to their own area. And 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 I would agree. And as somebody that has a good view out of all of those facets, those four functions, right? That understands the vision that you're shooting for, mm -hmm. that you're going for. What's the target, right? That's going to be able to kind of react to the adversity um, along the launch of this new whatever, right? Yep. Usually driven by a network. And as they, as you go down that path, and but I think you have to have one on both sides, right? Absolutely. On on the customer side and on the vendor side, right? Yeah. So and, now I was going to get into that next thought of how the dynamics of the uh, telco space, the service provider space, has kind of changed a little bit in the, over the last few years. It's contracted a little bit. You have bigger new, uh, mergers and acquisitions that have come into play on a, on a number of players. And you have, you have a, um, at least we've seen a lot more instances of heavy vendor reliance on things, one throat to choke yep. uh, from, the, from mm -hmm. the service provider's perspective. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and by the way, that's also the other way, right? On the customer side, it is inordinately more difficult when you are dealing with three to four stakeholders and no one person really in, in charge. Yep. And now you're dealing with, you know, which, who do I really follow? Who do I, where, where, who really is the keeper of the keys and has the final answer? So let's talk about then ways to measure success in that scenario because you've got, you instantly have this. And you can't you the can't live with that. Is, you can't live if you if you get if you get into that when and it happens that you know people get thrown under the bus. Some people sometimes people are throwing the bus. Uh, yeah. You know, so you a lot you, of CYA every it, which way. Mm -hmm. So that 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 goes down to the project management piece of this and the and the types of people that are managing the process. Mm -hmm. So having that uh, that nimble agility and be able to work with uh, adversity as a group together quickly mm -hmm. across those different facets, those different groups that are doing that is key. That's another success factor that if you've got a lot of finger pointing going on and not getting a lot project, of answers, project then that's manage, not being done well. Project management is without a doubt, you know, a massively critical component, right? The other one that I'm going to advocate is leadership on both sides of the equation. You know, somebody that is leading the charge, yeah. right, for whether it be on the customer side or on the vendor side, somebody who's really the leader and willing to kind of take the darts. Are you talking about on the from the highest level or are you highest talking about on the leader? highest level? Well, you know what? Because I think I, it kind of trickle. I think you need leaders in each one of these areas. I, you know what? I apologize. So let me, let me refuse that, right? So you have the money guys up top, mm -hmm. right? 
And then you've got the next level down where these are the people that are driving the bus from, from both sides, right? Yeah. And then you've got all of the lieutenants, you know, and all of the, the people that are working across, you know, you know sometimes 20, 25 different vendors. Oh, right? yeah. Sometimes, Easy. you know, and on the customer side, 12, 15, 20 stakeholders, Right. So how do you how do you kind of wrap all those people together as you orchestrate across these four elements? That's a booger, man. Yeah. Well, that's a you, booger. And that and that, that uh, but that also speaks to the bigger holistic view as well with that. So let's say you've got that 25, 35 vendor scenario that's at play. Mm hmm. Nobody really sees the you know all of the vendors interacting completely with each other vendor. So one of the things that will happen is vendor A and vendor B are working on one one workflow, for example. But it also actually requires some work that needed to be done by vendor Z and vendors X. Correct. So and well, sometimes people wrong. see and they've got their stuff set up, but they're like, we, you know, we're, but, we're not. And, and an example in something like that is that you've got vendor X and vendor Y that are, you know, that are kind of the primary uh, attributes or the uh, participants in a workflow. Mm -hmm. But vendor Z is down here. And so because it's a, maybe a minor or supporting role, they may not be included. Right. So that you go down, go ahead, X and Y, move forward, move forward. They'd keep Z in the, in the, they don't bring them in along all the time. Well, they don't even know that Z is there. So right. you'll get A and B will argue with each other yep. because something's yep. not working around. It really turns out they're both consuming stuff that came from Z. Yep. Yep. And no one's engaging with Z on that. Yep. They're going, when I see your stuff, it's not right. When you see my stuff, it's not right. When it really boils down to is you don't really realize where that stuff came from. And so I'm going to go back to, you know, you've got a system integrator leader on this side and you've got the customer leader on this side, preferably one, you know, person on each side to kind of deal with the issues and all of the different um, stakeholders above them and below them. Um, but one of the key elements, right, is, is especially on the SI side, is to avoid, you know, how do you avoid this right how do you avoid the finger pointing how do you avoid honest saying, communication they're not doing this Solid. they're not doing this and we're waiting on them and all that kind of stuff and you you, you have to communicate communicate all that stuff in the project mm -hmm. status reports yeah. you can say well i'm waiting for vendor z and they're, they're just not there yet inevitably it's it happens, right? It always so, does. And that's so, why these things get pushed and why it takes a while. And, and, and the secret sauce to that, you need a lot of it. Communication. I, and, and, I, and I've been fortunate enough to see a multi-vendor orchestration across all of these four elements where everything, you know, had some you know, arguments and bits and bites and fights along the way, but inevitably everybody came together yeah. and everything was just successful and there was huge dances and, and happiness and goodness, right? And the, but that but that happened because everybody wound up being on right. the same page. And I've also and I've also seen project where where the finger pointing and the issues and the territorialism. Oh yeah. Right. And inevitably when on the vendor side is what you see is that you might have vendor, you know, one, two, three, and seven that have some of the elements that vendors four, six, and three also have and they're trying to you know say hey i can if i outperform them and i can you know yeah. take out that that i element, want that business i want I'm that gonna, business I'm right them out. and that is just one of the biggest aggravation points that i've ever had in my career watching this stuff yeah. is somebody trying to once the dance card is full you stay in your lane you say you support the customer you work toward that right but inevitably you got some people that are you know pac-man that want to kind of go gobble remember yeah. pac-man no, do, yeah, do you remember that son of a gun do you remember that son of a gun yeah, yeah, yeah oh I do. god that's another story but but uh inevitably you know you set the tone correctly right with those two mm -hmm. leaders your role is this this is your role this is here we need everybody to do this and that's just this good pmo and that's good governance and all those and other good different elements right and good communication but i've been fortunate to watch all of that orchestration come together in a beautiful symphony 
right? And a beautiful launch, and it was just fantastic, right? And I've also watched where some of that infighting was on the in front end of the project, and somebody had to come in and kind of lay down the law. Yeah, and I've around. also watched it where everything starts getting a little salty toward the end, and people start getting into the CYA mode. Yeah. Right? You, you've, you're going over budget now. How are you going to pay for this? You're going to eat this as a vendor. Uh, the, the, it, the customer says, and, hey, and, you, and, you bid it. Right. And, and make and, it work. And, and there's usually, there's, and in, in that instance, there's usually shared responsibility. Absolutely. Right. So, so but, in the, but in the bottom line, in the end, we're talking about orchestration. Across these these four key elements in the telecom space. And this this has been something that's been going on for 50, 60 years. Yeah. And I don't care about evolution of the next greatest thing in technology or the next greatest thing in network. These four elements have to work together. And it starts out from the simplest uh, where you have two mm -hmm. up to infinity number of interactions. And, and the other so, part is is that I don't care if you're a $20 billion telco or a $10 million greenfield starting a new plan. All of these elements working together have to be orchestrated. Every time. Every time. Without that. So let's go through then our final thoughts on oh, geez, uh, man, it's almost like a speed round. All right. I'm going to right. speed round at you. Right. Hit me. So like it's fourth down one minute left to go. What are your top three plays you're going to use to make orchestration work in the environment we talked about between CRM, OSS, BSS, and network at a, at a telecommunications company? Go. Once you figure out who the players are, you bring everybody into the room and you sit down and you set expectations about the project, the roles, and what is needed. You know, as you go through the whole process, you react, you know, you, you have to plan for adversity. You have to plan for bumps, right? Know that things are going to happen. And, you know, good communication all along the way, good just discipline, right? And, and inevitably, there will always be something that gets messed up. But how well do you react to it is, to me, a key is the personality, is, 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 is the personalities and the, and the culture of the vendor and the customer, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to deal with contingencies, because inevitably it's going to happen, right? So that those are mine. How about Excellent. you? Boom, back to you. Excellent. My three. Don't put me on pressure like that. Come I'm, on, I'm man. You put the on the pressure. Go. No, 100%. First up, you've got to have the contingency in there, and you have to stay on top of it. You're going to have bumps, and you're going to get some bruises on these things because they're big. they got a lot of moving parts. So always expect that something's not going to work right, but plan for how you're going to recover from things. Scheduling equipment that doesn't show up, except all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a little bit flexible, but you need to be demanding to the schedule that you want to have out, that you need to be able to understand that anybody that's been doing this for a while knows things go bump in the night here. That's so one. A, that's I one. Go. Now, number two is communication, communication, communication in an honest the metric between everybody. The C word. You've got to have it. That's Your project managers need to be in sync about important things. Program managers as well. Yes. And you do not want to have the fact that you have uh, project plans and things that are being filled out on a regular basis but not evaluated for what the content really means gets people in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you need you need to have a uh, a little bit of a litmus test paper that you apply to those timelines and anything that may have looks like it's sliding better dip that paper in there and figure out what what's burning a hole in the paper. That's number 2. Mm -hmm. And the third one is you need to communicate. So I'm going to leave that same one. Well, that's, that was number two. And number three. That's how important it is? Yeah, that's how important it is. Because if, do, if you don't, your orchestra, you don't have the same music on every page with yeah. everybody and their parts, and they, they know when they play, when they come in, mm -hmm. it, you're going to have a pretty nasty sounding song. Yeah, I, I would agree, man. <laughs> so not to beat a dead horse, but network is driving. Yep. Right. And then CRM, OSS, BSS all have different personalities, all claiming or wanting to be the lead. Right. But inevitably, you know, hey, shut up. So, you know, network is king. And then, you know, how they all kind of support that network evolution 
and where the market is going and what customers want, mm -hmm. right, is is critical, <laughs> right? And usually these projects will end up taking anywhere from usually a year oh, yeah. to two years, right? And and kind of, you know, ready, set, go, and planning for contingencies because there will be things when you have thousands of workflows across all of those elements, there's going to be a lot of stuff that goes bump yeah. in the night, right? And you just try to minimize the bumps in the night through good communication. So absolutely, I hate I hate falling back on the c word, but that's really what. It but is, it's true. It? It's true because if you don't, that that all goes back to the other thing we've espoused before, which is visibility. <coughs> Network, for example, it communicates with every one of these other business units, the OSS and the BSS, via the data, the events, and things that come out of it. So you want to have that visibility. You want to have that published in a meaningful manner to the BSS folks, yep. to the OSS folks. And ultimately, like you said, CRM kind of sits on its own. In well, all right. Industries. And hey, here's the last one. And I just realized uh, um, for, the, for anybody out there is that one element that we have not talked about, which is really key, customer experience. Right, which I kind of see as part of CRM. Right, right, which, but, but that doesn't happen with without the BSS, OSS, all of, and network all of the, all singing of, a good song. Right, all of those four songs, people, correct? They're the orchestra, right, leading to the uh, person mm -hmm. in in the in the audience, which is the customer experience, leading to a much better experience. I like how that all tied yeah, together. you want you want to have a nice <laughs> stereo response here, not yeah. like you're listening to AM radio in the there inside of a tunnel. There you go. There, there you go. All There's right. your experience. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's another edition of Revenue Uncoded. Brought to you from Kansas City, home of the world champion Chiefs. Hey, uh, that was another great session. Thank you very much, Mr. Preston, my Thank co-host of 20 plus years. This is uh, to everybody who's given us likes, who's given us comments. Um, if you like what you hear, let us know. If there's something that you agree with, let us know. If there's something that you disagree with, let us know. If there's something you want to hear us talk about, let us know. Either way, thanks. We appreciate it. For Revenue Uncoded. Thanks, everybody, for your support. It's been great.